Hello, my name's Sam Ingalls. I'm the editor-in-chief of Sound on Sound magazine, and for as long as I can remember, people have been telling me the same thing. Hardware DSP in audio interfaces is on the way out. Computers are so fast now, we don't need DSP to run plugins anymore. All it is is a giant dongle. Come on, cast off your DSP shackles and join me in the glorious future where everything runs natively, they said in 1998. But like Rasputin and black mould in the bathroom, DSP refuses to die. And if you look inside almost any multi-channel interface on the market right now, you'll see a DSP chip or something that does the same job. Why is it there? Latency. What is latency? Well, it's a delay between the sound going into our computer from an instrument or a microphone and coming back out again so that we can hear it on our monitors or our headphones. It's a fact of life with digital recording and it's a pain in the arse. If the delay gets longer than a few milliseconds, musicians start to hear it and it begins to affect their performance. So what can we do about latency? Well, the anti-DSP brigade will say, this is a solved problem. You buy a fast computer, you buy a Thunderbolt interface, you run it at a very low buffer size, and then you can monitor through your recording software at pifflingly low latency. Which is true if you're tracking into an empty project, but you're not always doing that. What happens when you're putting the finishing touches to your 100 track mix and the singer suddenly decides that she absolutely has to recut her vocal? Well, then maybe you can't get the buffer size very low without running out of CPU resources. Or maybe all those fancy native plugins that you're using on the master bus need so much look ahead time to do their job that you're introducing 100 milliseconds of delay that's being compensated for. And then it's DSP to the rescue because the DSP in your audio interface allows you to set up a separate low latency monitor path that bypasses the recording software altogether. It routes the input directly to the output so that you can hear it with absolutely minimal delay. Come back, digital signal processing, all is forgiven. Except that there is a price to pay for solving latency in this way, and that price is complexity. Suddenly you're not just dealing with one piece of software and one virtual mixer window. You're having to tab backwards and forwards between two applications two mixers, you're constantly having to mute and unmute things in your recording software, and it's all getting very messy and slow. Computers were supposed to make our lives easier, suddenly they seem to have made them really confusing. So here's an idea. What if, instead of having to tab backwards and forwards between two applications, the recording software could control the DSP in the audio interface? such that whenever you record enable a track, it automatically gets switched to a low latency DSP monitor path without us having to do anything. Now there is an idea. It's an idea that Avid have taken up and run with and they're calling it a hybrid interface. It's the basis of their new Pro Tools vertical line carbon. Now this isn't a new idea. Avid themselves have done it before in the 003 and in HD Native, and there are plenty of other implementations out there like Steinberg's ASIO Direct Monitoring and notably UA's Luna. But usually it's a bit of a compromise. Yes, you get low latency DSP monitoring without having to switch between applications, but you can't use native plugins in the monitor path, and usually you have to work within a very constrained mixer configuration. So what's different about Pro Tools Carbon? Well, in a nutshell, the idea is to give us low latency DSP monitoring within a native DAW, but without the compromises. The DAW is Pro Tools, obviously, and the key to its newfound power is this button here. When I engage input monitoring or record armor track, you'll see this button turn green. That means the track is now running in DSP mode, and I'm hearing the input routed directly through the carbon interface at very low latency. Now that's something you can already do with other hybrid systems like ASIO Direct Monitoring, but look what happens when I record enable this mandolin track. Not only does the track I'm recording to get put into DSP mode, but also the two tracks next to it. Why is that? 
Well, my mandolin track isn't routed directly to an output. Instead, it's routed to an auxiliary input track via a bus. And it's also sent to another aux, which is giving me exactly the right blend of plug-in effects to sculpt my unique mandolin tone. And when I record enable the mandolin track, Pro Tools knows to put those tracks into DSP mode too. You'll also notice that I don't lose my signature mandolin tone when this happens. And that's because these plugins exist in two formats. There are AAX native versions that can run within the native Pro Tools mixer. And there are AAX DSP versions that can be hosted on the DSP chips in Carbon. When I switch tracks into DSP mode, Pro Tools automatically swaps the native ones out for DSP ones, and my mandolin tone quest is unaffected. When I've finished recording, I can just put those tracks back into native mode and use the DSP resources for something else. So the cool thing and the unique thing about Pro Tools Carbon is that I don't need to change the way I work in order to take advantage of these DSP low latency monitoring features. I don't have to constantly tab backwards and forwards between two different mixer windows. I don't need to imagine what my mandolin will eventually sound like when I can put plugins on it. I don't need to worry about where my tracks are rooted or whether my session has delay compensation going on. Everything that I put into Record Enable goes seamlessly into DSP mode and I can just get on with creating my seminal mandolin album. Even if I've got a ton of complex routing going on and I'm creating multiple cue mixes for different musicians, they'll all still be able to hear themselves with sub one millisecond latency. Impressive. So how is Carbon different from Pro Tools HDX? Well, in HDX, the entire mixer runs on DSP. You can use native plugins within that mixer, but each time you do that, you're using up a path to send the audio to and from the computer, and you also incur a small amount of latency. In Carbon, by contrast, the mixer runs natively except for tracks that are in DSP mode. And on those tracks, you can only use DSP plugins. So in HDX, the DSP is there both as a tracking and a mixing tool. But in Carbon, really, it's just there for monitoring live inputs while tracking. You wouldn't usually leave tracks in DSP mode at mix down. And if you did, you'd run out of DSP power pretty fast. So that's what Avid mean when they describe Carbon as a hybrid audio interface. But is it any good? Well, to find out, you'll have to read the full review, which is in the December 2020 issue of Sound on Sound magazine, and that's out very soon. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have a place in mandolin history to secure. Thanks for watching.